Hi, welcome to the second video in the Excel to SQL series. In this video, we will see how we can convert an XLSX file, which is an Excel file, into a .db or an SQL database, SQLite database file, so that we can upload it to the DB browser, the database management tool which we installed in the previous video. Let me quickly come back to Jupyter Notebook. So to convert the file, firstly, if you open DB Browser for SQLite, this is what it looks like. If you open DB Browser for SQLite, when you go under File, under File, you have the option to open the database, right? And when you click on that option, so you cannot upload an Excel file directly. When you go to that option, you can see that you can only upload an SQL database, SQLite database, which is a .db, .sqlite, .sqlite3, or .db3 file. So we'll be creating this file. Let me show you the folder where I have my Excel file located, right? Let me just expand, right? So this is my Excel file, this one. And uh, I need to use this file, use a Python code to convert this file into a database file, SQLite database file. I quickly come to chat GPT. I'm on GPT 3.5. And on 3.5 itself, I have the four origin, but I will not be using that for the purpose of this video. We'll write a very simple prompt. Uh, use Python, right? Convert XLSX to .db for SQLite. Then I will put in my folder path, right? If I don't put in this information, which is my folder path, my Excel file name, my sheet name, which are mandatory or uh, mandatory things that, it, that the code needs to have in order for it to access the data in the Excel, in the sheet, then to convert it and store it in the data frame and then convert it into a .db file. But if I don't give this information to ChatGPT, what essentially happens is it gives me the code, it generates the code for me, but then I'll have to manually put in this information. Right, so it tells me what are libraries I need to install. I need to install Pandas, OpenPy Excel, SQLite 3. And then it hints me, tells me that here you have to put in the file name, here you have to put in the sheet name, and here, what do you want to save the database file as? Do you want to save, call it output.db or something else? Then it tries to load the file from the database. So it, it's just creating a data frame, and in that it is using Pandas. If you look over here, it is ref importing pandas as pd as an alias pd dot read instead of writing pandas dot read it is reading the excel file the file path the file name why do i create this variable wherein i store the file path because i don't have to put in the path again and again right it is trying if it is able to read it then it will convert it if it is not able to read it then it will show that maybe if the, if the file name is incorrect in the code and in the folder it will say that the excel file does, is not found and if there is any issue while loading the file, then it will give me another error called as, um, and it's calling it an error occurred while, it'll print the message basically if that error occurs, an error, error occurred while reading the Excel file, right? Similarly, so all of these print statements that it has added at multiple levels is only to ensure that in case, these are basically for error handling so that you exactly know where the error happened and you can go and debug the code later on. So let's quickly uh, update the other information right so I can put in my folder path here then I can then I have to put my sheet name and then I have to put my Excel file name three things let's quickly add them right so my folder is going to be this one wherein I'll right click on the sheet I'll copy the path I'll put in the file path not here right and I'll copy the sheet name, put it here, and the, sorry, the file name, and the, just quickly, let me just check the sheet name. I don't remember if the sheet name has an underscore or no. So sometimes when your file has multiple sheets, or even in case of a single sheet, you will have to define the sheet name, or else the code will not know where to go and look for what. So you have to explicitly define and call out the sheet name, the file name, the folder path, so that the code can exactly locate where the data is located. 
let's give this a second to load it's opening i think my sheet is called orders compact let's just try that for now right and why we're doing this why am i showing you chat gpt because throughout this course as well and we'll be using chat gpt right to orders compact we'll be using chat gpt to learn faster and better right one thing is you copy the code without understanding and that's not going to make a lot of sense because that's only going to take you so far what we'll be doing is whatever throughout the playlist whatever task we do let's say we do something on excel then try to recreate it on sql we also in between come to chat gpt to understand how we can get that code generated in chat gpt how we can do the same thing in chat gpt because chat gpt is also very good at language translation so if i give it a python code and i ask it to convert that to an sql database sql query it can do that for me effortlessly right i've put in all the required information i'll save and submit and it should give me the code so while this is happening i have i'll be storing all the excel files that i use throughout this video any presentation or any document that i want to share with all of you or the database file as well in a github repository the link for that will be in the description of the video so it's created the code right i can copy this code and come back here i had done this earlier as well sometime back so i have a similar code here as well so minor modifications we can run either one of them let's just try to run this one let me just check if the sheet name is correct the sheet name is correct i'll just scroll down And I'll this code. This should take a few seconds to run, right? So whenever you see, whenever you run a code in Jupyter Notebook, you'll see this asterisk, which means that the code is currently in execution. It is running. And while this happens, we, so we'll be able to see that directly over here. We'll be able to see the file directly being created and saved in the same folder path where the Excel file is located, right? While this is happening, why why do we need to do this? So you cannot up upload a Excel file directly into a SQL database. I'm not very sure about the other ones, but I'm sure you cannot do it. I'll do some reading on that. But DB browser for SQL, you need to have a DB file. You cannot upload an Excel file. So typically how we do that is you get the, get the DB file in a folder, then go to open database and then choose a DB file. And then you can get the specific file and uh, upload it to db browser for sqlite let me just check the code is still running so it has not completed execution sometimes it takes a little longer but that's okay so we we, we wrote a very simple prompt right so use python convert xlsx to dot db for sqlite folder path excel file name and sheet name i knew that these three things were to be put and hence I put them beforehand. Sometimes you might not know. So you can also ask ChatGPT once it generates the code for you, what are the things that I will need to edit? Right? What are the things that you need from me to complete the code? Using similar prompts, like the ones that I just mentioned, you can enhance your ability to write the prompt and get a perfect code, almost perfect code from ChatGPT. This is not completed. I'm not sure why it's taking a lot of time. Let's just check. I had run this uh, sometime back. I created, I recorded the same video, but there was some lag in my system. So the video did not get captured correctly. Hence I'm recording it again and we'll upload, we'll be uploading it immediately after this. Once it is recorded, let me just try to pause this and let me try to run the other one, run the other code. They're both doing the same thing essentially, just the with the, the approach is slightly different, right? If you see that, both the codes are importing pandas and sqlite the first one is importing os which is another library the next one is not importing os it's importing only the first two which is pandas and sqlite 3 right then uh, you can you can also use another library called openpy excel to read the data from the excel file and store it in the data frame before converting it to a table for uploading into db browser not very sure why this is taking a lot of time but okay so this is completed right 
So the asterisk is gone. You can see that it's line two and you come back here and you should be able to see the file. I, oh, okay. I stopped the execution and hence I think that is the reason that the, it was not completed. Let me just scroll up and see if this one is still running. Let me just run this again very quickly. Okay, so it's just telling me that, you know, the second code was interrupted because all of this is not relevant for now. The error is keyboard interrupt. I manually interrupted the code and hence it threw an error. Let's see the first one. Uh, so the first one is still running. Let's quickly, let's wait for a few seconds so that it is completed. So just to show you what the file would look like. Let me go to the folder where I have a database file saved from earlier exercises. Yeah, so this is what the database file would look like once it is installed over there, saved over there. So you can see that it has the icon for the DB browser, which is the dot SQLite extension, right? And you can see that the file type is also SQLite. Let me zoom out again. Okay, let's quickly see if the code has completed execution. It, it has not, which is fine. I'll be putting the code and the database file as well in the, the GitHub repository. And from there, we can you can download it and then we can start working. For now, just to show you how we can upload the file, you'll go to file in the DB browser, once you open DB browser, then go to open database. Once you click on open database, it'll ask you to locate where your .db file, the .sqlite extension file is saved. Mine is in the folder with my name. So I will navigate to that folder. And once I'm there, I'll select the relevant file, which is my SQLite file and click on open. And once I do that, the file will be loaded here, right? You can see that the sheet name has come up, orders compact. You can see that it is creating a table called orders compact with all these columns. When I hover my mouse over the schema, you can see that it is creating a table called orders compact. So when you load the data, it is creating a table. Create table is an SQL command statement. So you're creating a table, but it didn't do it manually because we uploaded the file, so it did it for us. Within that, the sheet name or the table name is going to be orders compact, a table in this case. And then there are the columns. And besides the columns, you see something called a timestamp, timestamp, text, text. Essentially, these are your data types. Like in Excel, you have the data and each column will have a single data type. For example, an order date in Excel or Power Query would be a date or a date and time. Ship date would be a date or a date and time. So the customer name is going to be text. If I scroll towards the right, sales profits are either going to be whole numbers or integers right so we'll take a look at that in detail in some time or in the next video so to write the sql query to execute any sql query you will come to execute sql area and here is where we will be, we will be writing our sql query and we'll start that from the next video wherein we have a better understanding of our data set so that we know exactly what you want to look at. Let me just quickly check. Okay, so you can see that the code has completed running. And let me come back to the folder and you can see that the file is saved. Just to confirm, yeah. So you can see that the file is saved at 627, right, which is just now. Perfect, so we saw how to use Python and chat G, how to use ChatGPT to write a Python code to convert an XLSX file to a .db file. Why is it important? It is important because in a DB browser by SQLite to upload your data, you will need a database file, not an XLSX file. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll start writing our SQL queries. I dedicated two videos to setting up SQL and setting up the file that has to be uploaded. Like I mentioned, all the data sets, all the database files, all the code that is 
relevant to the videos or the playlist will be uploaded in the GitHub repository, the link to which will be in the description below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.